Well, hey everybody, welcome back to Palm Tree Life. We are trying a new game today. I've messed around with this game a little bit. Uh, I've enjoyed it. I do like playing uh, like str strategic simulation sports games. Uh, puts me in the mindset of being a, a coach or a general manager or something like that, owner. I enjoy that. It, when I just to use a very familiar game, uh, when I play like Madden or something like that, I enjoy the franchise side of it. So uh, I am going to be playing this game uh, from Draft Day Sports. Wolverine is from Wolverine Studios, but Draft Day Sports called College Basketball 2021. I know 2022 is going to come out probably within the next six to ten months, but I thought I'd have some fun with it and get familiar with it before that one would come out, and we'll see if we like it enough to even pursue after that one. But I have started a, a new uh, coaching career where I'm going to be controlling a very specific team, and so I wanted to give you the information here. So first and last name, Palm Tree Life. I'm gonna, I'm, 34 is not my age. I did 34 because I figured when you're trying to break into college coaching as a head coach, just about where would you start or what's the earliest? I mean, you'd have to be, you'd have to be pretty special, I think, a very unique situation to break in earlier than about your mid thirties. So you would have to have special opportunities. So I did earlier thirties, right around mid thirties. My dream job is Ohio state chestnuts. Obviously they filled in other nicknames to keep, you know, to be able to use even the school names and you'll see some of the school names even change. I did that as dream as my dream job. Cause that is who I am a fan of. So sorry, sorry if that disappoints some of you, I have a very high ambitious level academics I'm average on I don't want that to be a reason why I can't go to a school um, you know so if I want to go to a school that's not as high as academics I don't want to have a negative opinion about that so I just chose to make that a non-option basically high discipline because I would if I was a coach I would expect high discipline and integrity I would expect high integrity and then my temper level I probably am actually a little above average if I were to be a coach but I'm just going to leave it on average Philosophies, I've already filled this out. Um, I tend to use more of a veteran team in these types of games. I tend to use more players if possible because it develops my bench more, my offensive pace. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna run kind of a uh, intense defense and, but high offense to, actually I'm gonna move that pace down a little bit because I don't necessarily want a fast pace on offense but I want a certain type of offense, and we'll get into that here in a second. Obviously, high defense. I don't care about full court defense or zone defense, so I took those off. On my skill level, <clears throat> um, I put the current coaching model at average and then my development ability to get to elite because I do, I'm going to start at a very low-ranking school, and I know where I'm going to go here in job selection. So I know I'm going to start small, which I'm okay developing and building up to a bigger school, but I want the opportunity to get there. So that's why I put it at elite. I want to have a chance to make it to an elite status. But I'm going to, I put my scouting ability lower to get some of these others up higher. And the reason I did that is I'm confident that some of my assistant coaches will be able to scout and I don't have to worry about that as much. And then job to selection, I'm going to go for a very, low prestige school so where do we got here why didn't it there we go so let's go I am gonna take right here SIU Edwardsville because it's not necessarily next door but of these low prestige schools it would be the one closest to me so I'm gonna have some fun with the Cougars if they're even called the Cougars and I know that's our Panthers okay so they went Panthers SIU Edwardsville Panthers that's what we're rolling with within this um, playthrough so at least that's where we're going to start off job offers a hundred thousand for three years sounds good to me I would take it if they offered me today all right so here's an initial look at our team have a lot of Illinois boys here which makes sense um, I know some of these places and some of these schools that are probably where they're coming from. Very interesting. So my roster, what I want to get into is what type of strategy I'm going to use. 
as you can see on our strategy here, we currently, our main offense is the five out, which is good. I actually want to use the five out. And from what I've seen in the game, you could, like, I could have created a league and chosen the SIU Edwardsville Panthers every time, and these offensive strategies would be different. So it doesn't just hand it out specifically to each team every time. So I'm kind of glad that our offense is the five out because that is what I want to run. I like the triangle as and shuffle as the secondaries. The other one that I would add in is flex. So if I notice, we don't really have anybody, as you can see here, we don't have anybody that knows flex, um, whereas shuffle, we've got a decent amount, and triangle, we have a decent amount. So if we, if we get some players that know flex, like as we get bigger freshman classes, I totally would go that direction, um, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. And our five out, um, people do know this. So I like this uh, as far as our usage goes. I actually, let's go, I'm just going to go and bump this up a little bit here. Offensive focus, we're going to favor, well, let's see what we got here. I need to see my roster. I want to see, if I've got good outside shooters, I'm going to favor the outside. So scoring, they're okay. 22 is okay. Like that's, and my best score, the, both these guys are inside scorers, I'm guessing. Yeah, field goal inside, field goal jumper. So, <clears throat> yeah, so my best scorer is an inside guy. And these guys aren't bad outside guys. So we're going to have to probably take it a balanced approach on strategy. So balance, offensive set usage which gives freedom basically the higher the right here the higher the set usage percentage the more structured your offense will be set a lower percentage if you want your players to have more freedom on offense to play closer to their preferred styles i'm going to go a little bit higher we'll see i can always adjust that later if i need to and then defense we are i'm even going to go like we are a man team. We're not a zone team. I'll go with that just in case. We're not full court press at all. If we can't get the job done during the game, doing full court press for the last minute isn't going to be that big a difference. And plus, we're we we have less talent. So, in a in a game or on a team where I'm just going to get less talented players, I have to really focus in what do I want them to be good at, and so I'm going to focus at that. Let's see what insights are. Okay, that's just the overview. School, in, let's check the school info. So our, we could select a non-conference rival. Let's choose, let's just go SIU. We'll do Carbondale. Southern Illinois. Are they in? There it is. We'll do whom? I mean, they're normally they're the Salukis. I don't know what they're called here. <laughs> but we'll do Southern Illinois as our rival. So our conference prestige is 28, so we're not quite two stars. Our team prestige is four. we got a long way to go. We have a decent starting budget. Um, our assistant coach costs. Let's look at our assistant coaches staff here. This is one thing I do like about this game that you don't always see. You can actually hire, fire, promote, give specific um, places for these people to coach. So like this guy's better at player development, so it would make sense that I'm assigning him to practice. I know that over my career, I'm never going to be a great scout. So as I'm able to hire these guys, like oh, they all have three years remaining on their contract. But as another team would hire them or as they would go somewhere else for a promotion and I have to hire somebody, I'm going to look for scout for coaches that have higher scouting ability because I know I'm going to be lower 
and then I also want higher, like the, probably player development for practice. So I'm glad I have James Clark here as my second uh, assistant. And obviously, as you get promoted to third, second, first, you're going to get paid more, as you can see here. All right, let's see here. We have a couple of seniors. You got a shooting guard. So these are walk-ons, these seniors. So do I only have one senior? Yeah, one senior, shooting guard. Decent scorer, pretty good outside shooter. Not a very good inside shooter, not a very good free throw shooter, not a very good passer, decent ball handler, but that's the guy that I'm losing. Uh, IQ is pretty good. He's a good athlete, so, and he is a two and a half star with the potential to be a three and a half star. Obviously, as a senior, it's unlikely he's getting to three and a half stars. So I do have this John McConnell though. He's probably my second best player behind. My best scorer is right here Mel Watkins and he's a junior too so we're gonna have to recruit some people and we'll get into that which is what we're gonna do now just check the inbox so welcome recruit class rankings we're gonna let's just go to the bottom where are we at we're gonna be down here somewhere there we are 305 right now um, we can purchase our scouting reports so well coach it's time for another exciting season we all know how important getting good recruits to your school is you don't want to be a step behind on all the recruits do you well you no longer have to be with our recruiting reports there are seven different types of reports you can re purchase and we'll get into that in a second we got the scheduling notice and we've got our basketball budget which we've already seen the only reason reason that we're going to get into any trouble with the budget is um, recruiting and I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue All right, so let's advance and get to the recruiting. All right, so we are at an Illinois school. So we're not, I'm not doing international and national. Frankly, I don't have enough money to do that. And nobody on these reports are coming to my little dinky school in the middle of nowhere. You can see it in Illinois we're the yellow here so we're in the Midwest report if we want our local kids as we get better and maybe get more money I might purchase the Great Plains because you've got Iowa you got Missouri maybe Southeast depending on what I'm seeing because you got Kentucky Tennessee Arkansas right there but right now I'm just gonna do Midwest report because that's all like money I got I'm gonna do the premium from what I've done I think premium gives you the best report even though I don't have a lot of money left I, I do think it's the best option so I'm gonna go that route all right So the summer travels coach with the summer camps rapidly approaching we need to be able to book transportation and hotels for you and your coaches if you are planning on attending any of the summer camps please click the advanced icon above to confirm your travel plans oh man i'm not sure if i should go to this camp it's quite a bit of money i'll have six thousand left to recruit with all right i'm gonna take a chance I'm, this may be dumb once again i'm i've played this game very little so uh i'm not sure uh i'm i'm learning as you're watching so uh you may be learning from my mistakes in this if you buy this game i would say that i have really enjoyed this game though what i've played with it all right let's see what we got here recruiting begins coach beginning this week you can officially begin to recruit your players for entry into your program next season. Recruiting will take place every week from now until the end of April. Remember to set your recruiting instructions every week. We're only looking for one guy too, so I doubt we're gonna go all the way to April. Like, I mean, as soon as we, we're kind of a program where as soon as somebody's willing to come to us, we just need to go there. So recruiting opens today. To recruit players, click the recruit players link in the top menu road icon. When you're finished with your recruiting task for the week, click the advanced menu. So. Recruit players right here. 
Hello coach, welcome to the recruiting screen. This message will only show on this date, first uh, season of a career. Just to help you get situated, there's a help button available, as well as the dates button, all that stuff. So, we want Midwest region, which is, but we want the premium report. And we don't want the full recruit, we want interested recruits. So right here we're seeing three stars are interested in us. So those are all three stars. I doubt they're all interested in us, but we're going to just try to get the best player. And I do know, I'm pretty sure, so Michigan, so 650 to scout, whereas Illinois is 75. Wisconsin 650. So we're going to probably have to stay in Illinois. What's Indiana? 650. Minnesota 650. So we have to stay in Illinois. That's just where we're at. So let's make some phone calls here. Actually, I guess we're watching film. We could visit and host recruit. I, I'm going to wait. I gotta see if these guys are even interested in us. So let's see, right here. They're interested in Southern Illinois. I'm gonna look for SIUE guys first. Ah, oh, here, this guy is Greg Humphreys. So we're gonna add him to our call list because he's actually interested in us. We're going to do the watch and call because he's actually interested in us. All right, we're number nine on this guy's list. Seven on this guy's list. Right where are we at with Joe? Did he go through them all? Where did Joseph Wright come from? There he is. Alright, we're six on Larry Robin or Robin. Five on Rodney Hall. Let's see how many we got left here. Lawrence Pruitt is the last guy. Six on Sean Smith, Lawrence Pruitt. Okay, so how many people are on this? We got six so far, so we can add some extras if we need to. I may just even see who else is interested beyond these guys. That's towards the top. Overall, 101, uh, not bad. And 29th in his position in the Midwest. So that's pretty good. What I have seen as you get ratings, I, I have, from the little research that I've done, I have seen that scoring is a big deal. Like that is a trait that you want to pay attention to. So let's look at this. We want to do film for this guy. We'll do film for Nick Taylor. We're going to do film on all these guys. Start with six, and then let's make some phone calls. Greg Humphreys. Let's do general information, interest in school. Couple, oh, he hung up on me. 
Didn't want to talk about parents, apparently. All right, Nick Taylor. Let's try pitch areas with him. Found out a little bit. Playing close to home is very important. This is a big factor. All right. So we know that who is that guy? him detail yeah location and playing time are a big deal to him <laughs> he didn't even talk <laughs> all right uh let's try rodney hall close to home is my number one priority All right. All right. So we know Rodney Hall, his number one is location. So, and the fact that he's in Illinois, what part of Illinois? Pearl City, wherever that's at. He's in Illinois, so that's a big deal for us that he could potentially, you know, that could be something for us. So let's just assume we've got those, let's see, overall to 194. Let's do just Illinois and interested recruits. Um, so these guys are interested, but they weren't. See, it says they're interested, but they're not on there. I'm not seeing anybody on SIUE's bandwagon here oh, nine Nick yeah but see I already have Nick Taylor yeah so they may be interested but they're not interested enough so I already had him so Let's look after Sean Smith. Let's just look at these guys. Well, we don't have their top ten. We don't have all their top tens. So their top tens are unknown. So what I will do, can I, I have four left. I'm going to watch his film because we don't know what his top 10 looks like. We know his top 10, and we're not on it. Tanner, we don't know his. So let's look at his film. We don't know his. One left. Look at Tang Tigs. That is a unique name. So we'll look at his and we'll add these guys to the one. Let's see. View. We'll add to our watch list. Tanner, Patton, and Tigs. Okay. And then we'll advance. National camps, it's time to summer camps to begin and it kicks off with three national camps. All right, we're not going to those. I don't think there's anything else for us to do on recruiting. Um, right here. 
Oh, no, we can watch more film. Okay. Ooh, all right. Now we've got some details here from watching the film. All right, let's do on our watch list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got ten. All right. So Humphreys is still interested. So pretty good inside shooter, pretty good outside shooter, good athleticism, scoring is bad. And like I said, from what I've seen, this is a big deal. So like he can be A in outside shooting, but if he can't score, I, I feel like scoring is being able to create your own shot to be able to actually see these play out. Um, I'm sure athleticism plays into that somehow too. And when, within our offense, we need guards that can do really well in the perimeter and then bigs that have a big, they have a post presence but can also shoot outside. So if like stretch fours, if we had more of a stretch four than a big dominant inside center, that's probably more of us. But since he's interested, even though it's at a 10 level, we're going to watch film. Go to the next guy. So his scoring's better. His outside shooting's still good. He's a really good at, uh, passer. Athleticism not as good. Um, not a good inside shooter either. So, and I wish like you could see. It'd be one thing if this guy's C minus, but he has no potential. Whereas if the other guy's that D plus right here, he's a D plus. But if his potential was like A, then I'll still take him. Scoring, so this guy's inside. He's a center. He's an inside guy, but he's not bad outside. He's average outside shooting. He's got good passing for a big man. Here we go. Larry Robin. He's a stretch four right here from Galena High School. Inside is excellent. He's He is an average scorer, and at our level, we're not going to get a lot of A-plus scorers, but he can also shoot outside, and he's got good ball handling and passing. Terrible defender, but... You're taking the all the offensive stuff he has. So you're taking that 6'9 stretch four. I, I like what I'm seeing with Larry Robin. And he's got his number six on his list. So I don't know about that guy at all. See, this is this guy's only outside. You basically get him because he can handle the ball right now. But He's not bad, Justin Patton. We don't know his top 10, but he's not bad. We may need to call him. And he's not bad either. He's good. So how do you how are you an F on defense but A at stealing? That doesn't make any sense. So terrible defender but can somehow steal the ball. Maybe it's because of his athleticism, I don't know. But I'm going to try to these guys that I don't know especially Justin Patton. I kind of like what I'm seeing from him. I'm going to try to call him if I can and try to get his top 10 schools situation. You guys aren't in the mix. Crap. Very important. Location tends to be really important for these lower end guys. So let's see if, if we know. No, we still don't know for sure. Um, all right, let's go back up here. Let's get a hold of Larry Robin. Parent info. So his parents aren't that rich. But this would be like when you get into the four and five money dollars, they're pretty wealthy. And apparently his parents didn't go to college. Um, his parents control have very little. So really, what his parents think means very little. So we want to know what Larry thinks. So let's see. We learned quite a bit from that conversation with Larry. 
So we need to check playing time, location, and facilities to see about him. Let's see. Oh, he found out a lot about him. Location, I think, is where we're landing with him. Yep, it's looking that way. Number one priority. So we found out his. Is this, uh, I can't call. All right, phone calls are done, so let's advance. National camp, so these are the really good players. All camp honors, and this they really are telling you who the best players are. When they tell you this, these are the top athletes. When you see them up here, uh, you see it. And I don't think we had any anybody in the national camps though western regional we don't have anybody in that one that we're looking at we're looking at the midwest one which should happen where is schedule right here oh let's see key dates here we go So the Chicago one is July 14th through the 16th. So it's next week because it's July 7th. All right. So here you go. You can see locally who did really well. Um, recruits. Just look at these guys, see if we're moving up at all. Oh, we haven't done that yet. No moving up or down yet. I want to save my money in bringing people in until I know more for sure. But let's make sure I can't do anything here. Okay, I think we're good. Can't call. Advance. So we can do a few things here. Houston Classic in the Great Plains is today. We're not going to be there because it's not ours. So let's, whoop, not key dates. We want recruit players. We'll do some more scouting here. Let's see if the, they've gone up or down. So nationally, this guy is going up. Something to pay attention to, like in, in our ratings of them. They are going up, all of them. All right, let's get some details on some of these guys. So here you can see the recruit notes. Tang spends the majority of his time on offense looking for jumpers. Tang does not seem to be the kind of player who gets in the post that often, which we can already see that. His inside's not there. His outside is. You can already see that. But this could also tell you, like, their attitude and character. Sometimes it reveals that, and it does play into your dynamics. So when you see the roster, you can see... I think it's in player bio, maybe. No. Oh, you're going to see what type of player they are here. Uh, you'll see what's the relationship between the team and coach. So, like, Jake Graham is a phenomenal guy. So, you may have a guy that's not as good, but the relationships are awesome. And so, you keep them around. Whereas, you might have a little bit, maybe you saw a player that's about equal, but just relationships and stuff are just terrible. And so, you, you move on from them.
go back to recruiting. I think so academic school prestige. Let's let's find out from guys we don't know yet. So may have found out from him. So anything but location. All right. He was done talking. Do we know anything with Tanner? We don't. And I don't know his. I don't know his top. Until I find out their top ten, I'm hesitant to go there. What's he's six? Sean Smith. Let's find out from Sean. He's seven one. He's not a bad outside shooter for being seven one. He's just kind of average everywhere. But let's find out about him. Maybe there's a reason I don't know anything about him. All right. Rodney Hall. We're fifth on his list. He's not as great an outside shooter. Well, he's a center, though. So he's that stretch four guy. Location is his thing. We already know his. We don't know Robbins. He primary is a slasher. As a center, that's interesting that he's a slasher. He's kind of a stretch four as well. Pretty good ball handling. Hardworking kid. Yeah, let's... Oh, he's a Juco. All right. I don't care. Larry Robbins. So we need to check playing time, location, and facilities. I think we found it with location, though. Yeah, I mean, unless facilities is number one, we've kind of found that one. We kind of know his, we know his. So, Mark Tanner. Let's try and get some details on Mark. with the phone calls this time. All right, I think our camp is up. Yep. The Midwest Regional Camp begins today. And then the Houston Classic recap. Let's just make sure we can't do anything. We can't. All right, let's look at our camp. Coach, these players from our watch list were in attendance as the Chicago prep. So Greg Humphreys, our number one guy, the guy at the top of our list that's interested in us, was at this camp. He didn't do anything up here. Um, let's look at him. Greg really didn't stand out at the Chicago prep review. So he's... He is one of the top guys in Illinois or in the, this region. So they 100 were invited. He was one of the 100, but he didn't stand out in those 100. But once again, we are one of the worst prestige colleges in America. So I wouldn't expect people to just stand out everywhere. Make sure we can't make phone calls or anything. It doesn't look like it. I want to check the key dates. Because there's a moment where you can, here we go, evaluation period. There's a quiet period, evaluation, June 26th. 
So we can actually start. You're going to, I think it's June 26. You start seeing you're going up and down players' boards. So if you go into the recruit, we should start seeing that we're going up or down in that. So um, let's. It's obvious that some of the guys that we like, like Humphreys is our the best guy on our board. So let's scout him live. And then I obviously like Robin. I like what I'm seeing with him. And then who is the, uh, was it Patton? There's another guy that I really like. No. Although I might do that anyway. Might have been Justin Patton. I just hate that I don't know what his top 10 is. Feels like a waste of money. We'll do we'll do Rodney Hall just cuz I know he's fifth. We'll scout those three guys live. All right, nothing. I can do some watching of film. So we'll get all these guys again with that. Phone calls, so academic school prestige. Let's try to get those. All right, so we found out a little bit more about him. So it's still looking like location is his number one thing though. Nick Taylor, it's obviously location. Let's let's focus on Larry Robin here. We need facilities from him. So location's his deal. And then we're gonna do obviously location is his thing but uh, let's look at this again so not school prestige or location Let's try, let's try Sean Smith again. I mean, we got a quick hang up on that one, but we'll try it again. All right, so. Well, he at least talked to us this time. We found out that his parents don't really care. But they did go to Chicago State, which is interesting because Chicago State isn't on their list. So, whatever. All right, we can scout live again. So, we obviously have scouted live here. So Greg has some knowledge of the 2-3 zone defense. We saw that live. So he's a zone guy. Oh, well. So we learned about him. He has some 
knowledge of the half court trap, high post offense, which we don't run. So that's good to know. And then Larry Robin, he seems to rarely ever look for a three point shot on offense, which is weird because he's a B plus. He has some knowledge of the flex offense, which I said I'm willing to I'm willing to rotate that into the offenses if I need to. So I like what I'm seeing from from him. Let's let's watch film on all these guys again. I mean, I'm only looking for one guy. I think if I needed to fill like five spots, I would watch a lot more film on a lot more recruits. But we're at the bottom of the barrel. We only need one. So I'm kind of focused on that right now. Sean Smith, we'll go watch him live. Uh, what does Nick Taylor have me? Number nine. Let's do Nick Taylor live. And Stephen Brown. Yeah, sure, why not? Stephen Brown. All right, film study again. Nick favors the jump shot, which we would expect, so. Stephen Brown. Stephen does does try to drive to the basket on occasion, but is not his strong suit. And Sean Smith spends the majority of his time on offense looking for jumpers. So even on inside, that's weird. Even on the inside, he's saying that he does have some knowledge of the Princeton offense, which. We are not going to run at all. Well, let's host Greg Humphreys. Let's host Larry Robin. I like him. And then who is the other guy we want to host? I just noticed that none of these guys are above a D on defense. <laughs> We're definitely going offense. All right. Let's do uh, Stefan Brown. We'll host him. See how those, those all go. All right. Stefan Brown. Coach, I just want to let you know that I didn't think the visit was worthwhile. Nothing personal, but I think I'll look around some more before I make my decision. Does that mean? So it didn't cool. Or, I mean, we were still cool, but... All right, Robin, Coach, I just want to let you know that I appreciate the time your staff gave me on a visit. I've got some more schools to check out before I make my decision, though. He is becoming the guy, I think, that we're focused on. We'll see. I want to let you know that I didn't think the visit was worthwhile. Nothing personal, but I think I'll look around some more. So, it to me, it's becoming obvious that Larry Robin is becoming the guy. All right, we got reports back on these guys. Sean Smith. Uh, it was a cool visit. I like the canvas of the people. It'll be tough for me to make up my mind, but I'll let you know. Interesting. So he's sixth now. All right. So Sean Smith. I didn't think it was worthwhile. Rodney Hall. It was a cool visit. All right. We're fifth. So, and you can see, now they're starting to warm up. So we, we're seeing, let's go back to our list. I would say we're getting down to Sean Smith, Larry Robin. Like, it's... It's starting to heat up here. So when does the next recruiting for evaluation period? We can contact on... September 11th so that's when we can visit recruit in the home 
you can host recruit you can watch game film all that stuff so we want to go after those guys quickly and you want to know who you're trying to target so I'd say Sean Smith Larry Bo Robin or Robin right now and then Rodney Hall I think he was the other one right that said he enjoyed it Rodney Hall. yeah so that's where we're landing Rodney Hall Sean Smith Larry Robin centers so it looks like we're going center with everything we're doing I know the guy that we're losing is a shooting guard but you gotta we're not good enough <laughs> we've got to pretty much take who's interested in us all right now we can visit so we definitely want Sean Smith and we definitely want to pitch playing time. Let's see if we can get. So Sean Smith, location and playing time are important to him. So we're going to visit him. We're going to do location. Stephen Brown. We're going to do location as well. Where are we at on Rodney Hall? seventh on his Larry Robin we're fourth we're gonna go location with him Nick Taylor sixth we'll do Rodney Hall location All right, hopefully one of these guys really, really likes us. All right, we have three guys that love us. I wish I'm tempted to drop a scholarship <laughs> player. All right. Uh, Coach, I just want to let you know that both my family and I thought your visit went really well. We like you in the school, and I'm definitely going to have to give you some consideration. Talk to you soon. Same thing from Larry Robin. Ah, Stephen Brown. I just can't see myself playing for you. All right, Sean Smith. All right, so and we got a schedule. So we're obviously down to three guys. We're down to Larry Robin, who has us number one, and we like him. We have Rodney Hall, who has us number two, and we're in competition there. And then Sean Smith has us number one. But we like Robin better. So let's drop some of these guys. All right, I left Stefan Brown on the list simply because just in case. He still has us on here. Nobody's really hot on him. So I'm willing to visit him and put location as a pitch just to see if he gets something. And we'll watch these guys film. And I'm going to offer Larry Robin. Because in this whole thing, he was the guy that we liked right out of the gate. I like Sean Smith, but I, I don't want to get hung up in just the seven foot one thing. And overall, Larry Robin's a B minus. I mean, I just I keep seeing Larry as the guy. So we're going to offer Larry a scholarship. All right, our schedule. So, 
we've got I'm I'm definitely keeping it easy. We have playing Texas Tech. That's a pretty tough one. Washington State's pretty tough. I want to keep it fairly easy because from everything that I've read, watched, learned, um, wins get you more money, more prestige. Tournament wins, tournament uh, being in tournaments gets you more prestige, more money, obviously. Um, better recruiting, all that stuff. So we want to play games that we think we can win. So I'm good with this schedule. And Larry Robin is a Panther. Or, yeah, a Panther. I got to... That's gonna mess me up because I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they're not the Panthers. I'm pretty sure they're the Cougars. So it keeps messing me up. So we got a verbal commitment from Larry Robin, and he's on to us. So I am very excited about this. I may visit him again. Like we gotta keep him on point here. Practice begins. You have six weeks before the season opens up. So your practice time. Wise, uh, so use your practice time wisely to prepare your team practice continues through the season so it's important to set your practice schedule for the week on each Saturday throughout the season to prepare for practice click the practice play on button in the left side menu. there it is so practice plan let's look at our strategy So practice plan, we don't need a lot, of, like we're gonna do very little of this. We'll add man to man, five, we don't need, well, I guess we we need zone attack because we're, we're if we face a zone, we're gonna wanna know how to attack that zone. All right. We do not need to practice zone at all. He's on practice. He's on recruiting. He's on scouting. I cannot wait till I can hire my own coaches and get these things more accurate. But it is what it is for now. Oh, Sean Smith committed to Southern Illinois. Oh, he went to our rival. Mm -hmm. And then he went to Eastern Illinois. So something to watch for these guys. All right, we got our scouting reports for our first teams here. So we can view the report for Abilene Christian in Des Moines. And Redshirt, I'm not going to worry about Redshirt. So look at the Des Moines scouting report here. Roster comparison. They're saying no advantage on pointing guard, shooting guard. They have one on small forward. My bench is better. Uh, so we'll see how this all goes. Their best player is Clay Smith. They run a fast paced offense with a lot of offensive uh, freedom baskets. In the half court, they sport a balanced attack with their primary set being the motion offense. So they don't, they're going to have big guys out and guards down below, and they just kind of do all kinds of stuff, really. And their defensive style is a 1-3-1 zone, so I'm glad we practiced that for a little bit. And they do go with pressure defense. Ooh. They're going to be a tough matchup because we don't ju we just don't practice a lot of that. So that's going to be a tough matchup for us. Let's see Abilene Christian. They run a fast-paced offense. They tend to go with flex, which is more of who we are. And they press at points. They do the primary defense man to man, but they will go with a full court press. So something to pay attention to there. Coach, it's time to kick off the season. You can play or simulate games by clicking the basketball icon from now until the championship is over. All advancing through the season takes place by simulating the games each day. So uh, we're gonna see this. Our we're in the game week. We have our other scouting reports. I'll check those later. That you're going to see here our first game is going to be coming up we will simulate two hour game 
All right, our game's up against Des Moines. So we'll jump into that here in this next episode. Thank you so much for checking this out. I know the recruiting wasn't super exciting, but we'll get into the games here in episode two and follow this career in SIU Edwardsville. I hope you're enjoying it. If you are, please like and subscribe. Uh, I'd love to have you along for the journey through this series. See you next time.